in this video an assessment of the TDA2003 chip. I made this circuit in the past, say one year ago or so, and I mounted it in a shortwave receiver. And at first uh, the results were not very good, but anyway, now I made it again. And exactly to the uh, data sheet. And that's very important. Um, the data sheet is on the World Wide Web. You can find it everywhere. TDA2003, here is that chip. And I've mounted it on a small piece of aluminum. It's quite thick, by the way, two millimeters. And to my opinion, this heatsink is enough for most uh, applications. The chip was originally made for automotive uh, purposes, say car, radio, etc. etc. And uh, well, when we look at the properties, that's uh, in a certain way true. And especially the high frequencies, at least in this setup, are not very present, but on the other hand, there are a few very good properties and especially that when the voltage gets too high, it automatically switches off. And that's good. Especially in a car uh, where the uh, lead acid battery can sometimes, not always, but sometimes give it somewhat too high voltage. Uh, but of course uh, it does not switch off in a uh, to a low range, it switches off at approximately 18 or 19 or 20 volts. That's also a good uh, property of this chip. Here is the circuit, and I have uh, copied uh, here the circuit of the data sheet and here on the this side how I made it in real. Pen over somewhat decoupling capacitor uh, and also another capacitor that is important to uh, limit the peaks on the power supply lead. Here is the heat sink, it's the front. So this is the front. Uh, and in fact the good thing, also one of the good things of this chip is that it needs a, a tiny amount of components. Only uh, an electrolytic, uh, some small resistors, another electrolytic, etc. So, pen over somewhat again. This is an important connection from point 4 of the chip. This is a bridge, this is a bridge, then a three, a 33 nanofarad capacitor, a 39 ohm resistor, and then it goes to two of the chip. And the input is also very important. I had in the past some problems with the input um, sensitivity. It seemed to me that it was quite high. That's in a certain way a good thing. That means that you can connect a filter unit or a box on doll, a tone circuit, tone correction circuit to the input because the input is very high. A very good property on one hand but when, when you want to use it for say a more common use could be uh, that it is so high that you meet uh, hum problems, etc, etc. And that's the reason why I've kept here this potentiometer very small, 10k, 10,000 ohms. And another important thing perhaps to tell is that in the data sheet you see here electrolytics. I always use non-polar capacitors and with one microfarad or 0.47 microfarad these capacitors are able to um, send through 
the whole complete audio spectrum going from approximately 30 Hz up to uh, 20 kilohertz. Though this chip uh, does not, uh, in a certain way, does not uh, amplify the high frequencies very much. When you want to do more research, uh, go to the World Wide Web, go to the data sheet. Perhaps you can find in this whole setup somewhat other setup that gives more presence to the, um, the high frequencies. And then I mean frequencies higher than 10,000 hertz, 10 kilohertz. Uh, well, that was all to tell. Here that 10k potentiometer, that is the volume control. I'm going to drive in this demo the volume very much up. And uh, this box is can only handle approximately 5 watts audio. That means distortion, etc, etc. Well, that's all, more or less, to tell. This is the sound. Quite good sound. Lift up the volume now, here. 10k potentiometer, it's now on the minimum. It was not too much disturbing, but anyway, you can hear that the, the, the chip uh, can give out quite a good output level. And on the World Wide Web we see that it is sold for a 5 watt chip, but also for a 10 watt audio chip anyway. When we are talking about watts uh, in audio um, amplifiers. There's a lot of discussion. Anyway, 12.5 uh, volts and let's see what happens when we lift up the output level. The maximum current that the chip takes. So, sorry for the big sound. It's approximately 500 milliampere. And of course, when you lift up the voltage somewhat higher to 13 volts, 14 volts, could be that the current that the circuit takes is also somewhat higher. Let's listen again. It is a quite pleasant sound. And say... All I can do now is show the circuit again. While we listen to that more or less beautiful standard music. Data sheet. And how it was made. 